Welcome back everyone, here is Asia News for you. First group of Indonesians evacuated from Sudan arrived in Jakarta. Hundreds of Indonesian evacuees arrived in Jakarta after they were extracted from Sudan as countries continue to rescue their citizens from heavy infighting in the country. Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi and the country's army chief Yudo Margono welcomed the first group of evacuees who arrived at the Soekarno Hatta at the Soekarno Hatta Airport in Tangerang. At around 5.46 a.m. Western Indonesian time, about 385 Indonesians flying with Garuda Indonesia, GA991 landed in Jakarta. There were 248 women and 137 men, and 43 children among them. Terdapat 43 anak -anak. She said the Indonesian Air Force will help evacuate the last group of Indonesians on April 30. At least 115 Indonesian citizens are waiting to be evacuated out of Sudan. The conflict between the Sudanese army and a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces has triggered a rush to extract foreign diplomats and citizens. At least 11 dead after ferry capsizes in Sumatra, Indonesia. The National Search and Rescue Agency said at least 11 people died and one was missing when a ferry capsized off the eastern coast of Indonesia's Sumatra Island. A video from the Indonesian National Search and Rescue Agency showed locals standing to survivors on the ground at Intragiri Hilir after they were rescued out at sea. Officials said the ferry was carrying about 74 people to the small island of Tanjung Pinang near neighboring Singapore when it is suspected to have hit a log about 30 minutes after it set sail. The rescue agency said a search was underway for one person still missing, adding that reports were still coming in from witnesses. The first batch of Malaysian evacuees from Sudan arrived in their home country. Malaysia's foreign ministry said the 30 Malaysians and three other nationalities arrived at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport where they were greeted and embraced by emotional family members and friends. Thank God I don't know how to express my feelings. I've been so worried all this time. Now that they have finally been able to come back, I'm very emotional to meet them for the first time. <laughs> My plan now is that I want to rest first. It's been five days on the journey, but God willing, after two or three days, I will visit my family because we know everyone is worried about our situation. Relatives want to ask about our condition and so on. So I hope after this I can meet them all to let them know our situation and share stories and experiences. Malaysia's Foreign Minister Zamri Abdul Qadir thanked Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates for their efforts in helping repatriate their citizens. This first batch of evacuees were first flown to the United Arab Emirates from Sudan, from which they were then flown back to Malaysia. The conflict between Sudan's army and a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces has triggered a rush to extract foreign diplomats and citizens. Thailand nationals evacuated from Sudan land in Bangkok after conflict in Sudan. A plane carrying 78 Thai nationals arrived at an Air Force base at the Don Muang Airport in Bangkok as evacuations from Sudan gathered pace. Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha paid a visit to the first group of evacuees at the airport. The evacuation of nearly 200 individuals isn't easy. Also, there is no telling when such an event may occur again. This operation serves as a critical test of the effectiveness of Thai agency and government in safeguarding the welfare of our citizens. The conflict between the Sudan's army and a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces has triggered a rush to extract foreign diplomats and citizens. Several countries have evacuated nationals by air, while some have gone via Port Sudan on the Red Sea about 800 kilometers or 500 miles by road from Khartoum. 
Philippines and United States soldiers launches air defense missiles. United States troops and Philippine soldiers launched air defense missiles for a live fire exercise at the naval base north of Manila as part of their annual joint exercises. We bring capabilities for our partners and allies and the joint force to enable operations should that be required. It's the Army who provides a majority of the ground-based air missile defense inside of Indo-PACOM. So it's great for our soldiers to train and exercise, experience, live, interact with um, our counterparts here in the Philippines. Last year, in other locations around the Indo-Pacific, we have done similar things in different ways with new partners. So we are absolutely committed to going at the pace and the desires of partners, allies, and the region, uh, but also to make sure that we are prepared um, in order to provide ready forces as necessary. The drills are part of nearly three-week annual bilateral exercise between Manila and the U.S., with this year's edition being the largest in scale yet, with over 17,000 participating soldiers. Biden welcomes South Korea's president at White House ceremony to deepen collaboration. The United States President Joe Biden and South Korean leader Yoon suk yeol were set to hold White House talks aimed at deepening collaboration on deterring North Korean nuclear escalation amid anxiety about its growing arsenal of its missiles and bombs. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the alliance between our two nations. It's an unbreakable bond forged in bravery and the sacrifice of our people, sanctified by the blood of American and Korean troops who fought and defended liberty. In his remarks on the White House loan, Yun said he had come to Washington to design the vision for our shared future with Biden. After a day of talks and a joint news conferences, the two leaders were to attend a glittering state dinner catered by a United States chef whose mother immigrated from Korea. Biden and Yoon were using the first formal state visit by a South Korean leader in more than a decade to send warning to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. China urges peace and stability amid the United States and Philippines joint exercises. China urged for actions that promoted peace and stability in the region as the United States and Philippines conducted their annual joint military exercises. China has always believed that defense and security cooperation among countries should be conducive to maintain regional peace and stability. United States troops and Philippine soldiers launched air defense missiles for live fire exercises at a naval base north of Manila. The drills are part of a two-week annual bilateral exercise between Manila and the United States, with this year's edition being the largest in scale yet, with over 17,000 participating soldiers. Hundreds of Chinese evacuated through Port Sudan. Around 600 Chinese nationals were evacuated from war-torn Sudan from Port Sudan. This comes as part of the evacuation process of expats, diplomatic and UN workers in recent days as fighting between rapid support forces and Sudanese armed forces continues for a second week. The evacuees arrived by bus and boarded two ships. We have participated today in evacuating the Chinese through this airport and thank God it went smoothly. We are ready in the seaport authority to provide all the logistical services. Tens of thousands of Sudanese have also been fleeing war to neighboring countries including Chad, Egypt, Ethiopia and South Sudan. China urges all sides to seek a way for peace in Ukraine. China called on all sides to reflect on the situation in Ukraine and seek a new way to reach peace in Europe after President Xi Jinping held a phone call with his Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky. 
China always stood on the side of peace on the Ukraine issue. China advocates political settlement of the crisis and promotes talks for peace. Chinese state media reported during their phone call, she told Zelensky that China will send special representatives to Ukraine to hold talks with all parties seeking peace. According to the Chinese state media reports, she told Zelensky China will focus on promoting peace talks and make efforts for a ceasefire as soon as possible. Following the call, Zelensky immediately signaled the importance of the chance to open closer relations with Russia's most powerful friend, naming a former cabinet minister as Ukraine's new ambassador to Beijing. Thank you very much, everyone. We wish you a very pleasant weekdays ahead. We will see you soon.